In the health tech market, where every idea can meet a vital need, many are tempted by quick fixes such as running ads campaign and relentlessly posting. Yeah, clients convert through referral marketing thirty percent higher than any other method. Underscoring the power of a genuine connection and strategic partnership in the competitive landscape. Get ready for part one of the interview with Philip Reed, where he had me on his show, Focus on You, on the Phoenix National Network. I shared insight on effective collaboration for entrepreneurs and healthcare founders. Healthcare entrepreneurs, are you ready to rewrite the rules for your business so you can have more time off, a great team, and more income while creating a positive social impact? Then you are in the right place. Welcome to the Provider's Edge. I'm your host, Sabrina Rumbach. I'm a provider, an international peak performance keynote speaker, and a best-selling author. Let's open the gateway to profitability for you today. My guests and I help healthcare entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs and startup founders like you break through barriers so you can control your business, control your life, and control your future. This is your defining moment to be a disruptor in healthcare. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Focus on You.、Uh, it's just Phil today. There's no Oscar, but、uh, we have a great, great guest. Right here、uh, in our studio area, and、uh, you're going to want to hear from her. She does some amazing, amazing things. We met at a、uh, podcasting podfest, and、uh, I, I really admire what she does and who she is. So I, I want you to stay tuned for that. But、uh, good to see everyone. Glad to see that、uh, we are able to make it another year. This is our anniversary, actually. Uh, this is the our second anniversary of the focus on you. So we're enjoying, we're having a good time doing it. And I'm sorry, my friend Oscar is not here for us to kind of do that together. But we have a great guest for our anniversary day, and、uh, I can't wait to introduce her to you. Just a quick update for those of you who are going to be listening on. Spotify, iHeartRadio, and other audio platforms, as well as video platforms.、Uh, please download, like, share, to tell a friend that we are here for you, and we have some great guests on our program. Also, you might want to download the app.、Uh, we have an app, the Phoenix National Network app. Where all of our partners are on there. Anyone you see on the line, usually we can we'll have them on there so that you can get in touch with them and connect with them. So now we're going right into our feature interview today, and I'm going to welcome to our platform Sabrina Runback. Sabrina, welcome. Hello, hello. Thanks for having me, and congrats for anniversary. Yay! Yeah, we've been doing this. We started this like right at the beginning of COVID, and、uh, it's March, the, the, you know, March twenty second now. So, you know, this is really.、Uh, I just realized it today. I was like, "Wow, we've been doing this for two years already." <laughs> you know, but we were just having so much fun. Thank you for coming on today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's definitely an enjoyable conversation when we met in Orlando for Podfest. I'm actually a speaker for the global event coming up end of the March. So definitely for anybody、really? who's、uh, enjoying Podfest and have not get a ticket yet, I do have a, a few free tickets as a speaker. So feel free to contact me. I'll give you the code. If anyone wanted to check that out,、uh, I think it's it was a great meeting for creatives who are just wanting to share. Hey, this worked well. That worked well, right? And it get you juice flowing. It's n- never a dull moment. No, there there was never a dull moment. You're so right. Everyone had the same. I feel like everybody had the same energy. They were just kind of like really excited to be there and meet other people who have the same. 
uh, and like passion. So uh, I'm glad you mentioned that. I might have to take you up on that uh, <laughs> for the next time. But you know, I you know I find it very interesting what you do. Uh, but I want you to tell tell us a little bit about your story um, and you know how do you get started where you know in the industry that you're in. Yeah, thanks for allowing me to share. I'm just one of those busy bee, right? The, uh, so I'm a year to bunny, um, uh, only girl in the family. All my cousins are boys. Growing up, a family is like your girl be doing what you need, get a good grade, college, career, marry off. You should be all set. Now, I kind of went down that path and did not like it. And definitely that's not how I see my life is and how success version is. Um, and when I start going down the path of medicine, I didn't really want to do anything else but heart and lung surgery. And that competitiveness and the high standard that we have people's lives in your hand because that's come to to us really their alternative option we either offer them surgery or maybe they're even too sick to even go under surgery and when you're in those environment i think we start forgetting what we already know about how to keep ourselves healthy how do you handle tough conversation tough situation how do you not get sucked into the people that you work with their emotion their force of difficulty and then not get into a perspective almost like living into their life instead of being more objective so i think that was the difficulty where i kind of got into a situation where it's sink or swim right now of course we're really good at problem solving of course we're gonna swim but when you're swimming that also means you're platter all this water everywhere right it can be really crazy so to the point where i remember one morning i got into the operating room scrubbed in and then just so exhausted i was on call again um not feeling well had a fever of 101 and uh, the nurses are all so nice and they were passing day cool and cough drop under my mask just so i can keep going and the next day, I really couldn't do it. I had to call out and had to call one of our surgical assists to come in to replace me. Now, when I made the call, what I got in response for it was, oh, Sabrina, you didn't thought to tell us sooner. Like, we all plan our sickness. And seems was like it's so inconvenient, right? Mm -hmm. Like, how do we get into a place? Doesn't matter if it's in medicine or any service-based industry. It becomes so much into what you have to do, what do you have to pour out, whatever you do has to equal ROI. Instead of how do you do it in this efficient way that we don't get burned out, we still enjoy what we do. And most of the conversation, Phil, correct me to see what your experience are. Most people say, hey, I love what I do, but not how I do it. Do you hear that a lot? I do, I do, I hear that a lot, yeah. Yeah, in fact, sometimes I hear people, most people are love the work, right? They can do the work all day long, but it's just sometimes the environment or the culture is not conducive to, to them, so you know, they go in with this reluctance of, you know, I like, I love to do, whether it's graphics, I'll talk about graphic design, or, you know, um, I love to do the production end of things, but they just don't like the company that's around them, you know, so I, I do totally understand where you're coming from with that, for sure. Right, because by study, we know out of five factor when they study uh, salary, in your bonus, more autonomy, more education, like a career ladder, or more appreciation. Of all five factors, appreciation beat out everything when it measure correlating to peak performance and mm -hmm. productivity, right? Wow. And why are we so having such a difficult time 
、um, appreciation is also because we all heard about the five love languages. Then there's also the five appreciation language, because we see things differently. We wanted to be rewarded differently. However, we're not really good at end of the day about expressing our value, and we're just hoping if I do a really good job, someone will notice me, right? Someone will like say something to me, or someone will give me a gift. But everyone's Different level of appreciation is different.、Mm-hmm. So even when I talk to these organizations and startup companies, I don't care how small you are. You still have to have a five different ways to give people the option to、uh, show them that appreciation. Whether、right. it's、uh, an extra gift card so they can go shopping for their the holiday, right?、Mm-hmm. Or they really want the time. Then perhaps they just want an extra PTO day, right? Right, and then it could also be all they want is to have a conversation with you that you seem like you're actually interested in their input, right? And、mm. and then it's、really、not、matters. about hey you're doing, right? Yeah, it it, it really matters、uh, in. It's not just about hey you did a really good job. There's a gift card, but perhaps all they want is. Well, if I'm so buried, pick up that project, help me out on something, right? Just because you gave me some kind of a praise, that doesn't really help me when I'm like deep down and then pulling extra two hours just to get things in the right place, right? Just so I can feel the obligation and doing a good job for that client, for that patient, whatnot. So I realized. I have to take hundred percent responsibility for everything that's happening to me because I allow that happening to me.、Mm-hmm. And a lot of people will be saying the environment didn't do it for me, and that's correct in a certain way. How are you working with the environment for it to work for you instead、mm-hmm. of constrict you? That's a wow, wow. I like that. How are you working with the? No, but you know what? Here's the thing, right?、Um, Have you found? And this is a good. This is a question, just based on your experience. Have you found that most people、uh, really don't have the flexibility, or don't want to have the flexibility to adjust to a culture, right? So they, when they go in, it's almost like I'm expecting when I go into Microsoft Office, they conform their culture to me, <laughs> right, and not the other、yes. way around. Go ahead. <laughs> yes,、um, and that's a key component when you are in a place of behavior analysis and internal relationship. So、mm-hmm. when we talk about,、uh, so I'm now has pivoted into more of a healthcare business role, especially in how do you create a very high level strategic partnership to help your Gain that visibility, credibility in the right circle, then you can truly accelerate your mission and profitability, right?、Mm-hmm. And then, what does that mean? Relationship is that you have to pick the right people to even start with. If you continue to talk to the wrong person, doesn't matter it's external or internal, it's never going to go anywhere, right? That person is not interested in what you're talking about. They don't have the skill set that you need them to do. So you can be talking to the wall. For all that matter, it's not doing any change. And the other thing is, when you have a conversation with the right people, you have to be able to do what captivate their attention. If you don't know how to convey as information in something so simple in a minute or two minutes, you already lost them because our brain, right? We all have squirrel brains. Doesn't matter how intelligent we are, right?、Uh, why do you think TikTok blew up that quickly, right? Because it's like. Whole carnival of things that's going on. So you have to think about how to clearly position your ask, your why, and your vision. And、mm-hmm. otherwise, people are not going to buy into you because there are different natural languages of how we process. Right? A big strategist like me, I need to know why I even do this. If there's no purpose, no set of result that we're doing. I don't care what you're doing now. They were never going to bring you to that, right?、Mm-hmm. So the doing part for some people, they're so stuck on the doing. I just have to get this done. But why? Like, 
maybe you can do half of what you're doing, still get to the same result. So why, why are we overcomplicated? And then some people just wanted to be that visionary. So the why people like myself were the physical language communicator. And then the big visionary, they're the emotional. They like to see the storyline. They like to see what this can be looking like, this great thing, really go into it, right? Even for, for you, your Microsoft teaching people how to do the tactic, you still have right. to have, like, what does that mean to your team? What does that mean to your organization, right? Like what? And then you have the spiritual people. I, I have to feel the sense of alignment. <laughs> My grandma, right? So we do have to talk in three languages. And if you're too tactical, you're too physical person, the emotional people uh, is going to be, you're not allowing me to talk. I'm sharing my story. Why are you cutting me off? Because the physical people is like, oh my God, this story is a little too long, right? And the spiritual person is like, I'm so disconnected in what are you trying to say to me? Um, and then they're more likely to be like with the emotional person. But then if you're talking way too out here, then the physical person is like, uh, that does not sound realistic. You guys are just la di la, like doing all those things out there has no- Fairy, fairy tale, from la la land. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So when I even speak to some of the founders, when um, whether they wanted to leverage podcast speaking to even share their messages, right? This amazing solution they found to help X amount of patients, um, whatever that is. I always have to say, all right, let, let's do a test trial. Let me listen to some of your engagement that you have done, or let me bring you on my show just so I can see how you talk. Or we can already plan out your three talking point and how you're elaborating into these three languages Otherwise, it seems like people either go too technical, right? And then it's like, mm -hmm. okay, way over my head, or even where peers, I still don't want to hear the nitty gritties. I still want to go directly into, how does that matter to me? What problem do you understand from a listening perspective? And how would that help me, right? So mm -hmm. if we're talking so much on my perspective, it's, Oftentimes, you're missing out on that person. So as the employee, we're also missing that. We're also mm -hmm. thinking, I'm doing such a good job. I'm doing all this stuff. Well, mm -hmm. you might be doing a lot of stuff, but how is this moving forward? How do you create value for your team, mm -hmm. for your company? And then so how are you what, communicating that value? So what you're saying is basically, like, how do you, how do you differentiate busyness from effectiveness? Oh, yes. 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 That's always a, a great topic, right? I always mm -hmm. think busyness is not the same as productivity and productivity is not the same as efficiency and efficiency is not the same as effectiveness. They're right. totally different things, right? Just busy. Busy actually means chaotic. And <laughs> productive just means you got a lot of stuff done. Right. Effective uh, efficiency means you get a lot of stuff done in a short amount of time, right? right. And effective that means you're not only getting it done in a short amount of time, you're producing a very e effective result. That's result based, right? Mm -hmm. So the process of going through all that um, it's the same process if you're an executive or a team member. And uh, how do you think about that? I'll just quickly give you an example. We talk about that in the sense of a freedom compass. And you can only understand the freedom compass by understanding how do you define success. And there's a five level of success, your time, people, location, financial, and activity. Mm. Okay. So first we have to rank what of this five type of freedom how do you rank them? Phil, how do you rank them for you? Uh, freedom yeah. <laughs> is my top, right? That's so there's five like types of freedom. That. Right. So five type of freedom. How do you rank them based on most important time, money? Time. 
Okay, time number one, and then the rest mm -hmm. are, are location, people, activity, and money. People is second, location is third, money is fourth, and then the, of course the last, last one. Activity. Okay. Activity. All right. Okay, so knowing that, right, then it's easier for the next phase. So we say out of the, then you have a compass of guidance. Out of this mm -hmm. compass, you have four zones. We wanted to play 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of your time should be in your desire zone. The rest are in distraction, disinterest, and discouragement zone. And then mm -hmm. how do you define those? It's based on is, uh, the things that you do, does it give you that excitement, right? Like love it, do it, and are you good at it? right? It's in your genius zone already. You don't have to spend hours and time just figure it out, play around with it, right? And even mm -hmm. you can do it, but someone else, if it's the expert, can do it in less time than you and more quality, then right. it's still a distraction, right? Um, so surprisingly, or not surprisingly, majority of people stay anywhere else but their own desire zone. And the excuse is always, I have to. Somehow it's an obligation instead mm -hmm. of figuring out the way to create that freedom, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then when and when you're thinking about how to put things into the desire zone, then you still go back to the five level freedom because at the end of the day, it's still where to do it, with who, how you do it, would mm -hmm. that produce your money or ROI, and how much time is consuming, right? Um, so that become a whole separate assessment. But usually when people do that, I get at least 10 hours back for the week. But that's not even like primary thing I do for people. It's just that like that's when you actually have a structure, have a team like it's really thinking through, right? And then, but in the beginning, a lot of entrepreneurs, startups, what they're truly missing is relationship building. Mm -hmm. They're thinking about every other way to get their work out there SEO, ads, social media, those things don't come that easy and they don't have as good a result. Um, we know by study, your clients convert 30% higher if it's by referral, right? Wow. And, and then Wharton Business School also shown a study that lifetime value of that client when it comes through for referral is 25% higher than any other method of marketing. So when people are growing, they have this uh, amazing, let's just say a wearable product, right? Like perhaps, um, and so one of the clients just talked to, they have hormonal device, a, a personalized care, uh, alopecia for hair loss, uh, all this amazing stuff going out, out the pipeline. And then they tell me, oh yeah, we just started having these channel partners. Great. Are they consistent? What's the KPI on that? Right. Oh, we kind of just started having track it. Well, if you don't track it, how do you know if it works? And then and they're like, oh yeah. And then we also started ICO. I'm like, all right, like organic trafficking, but Google was analytic, all that is more difficult nowadays. Mm -hmm. And then, and then you have to continue to generate more relevancy article, right? So it's not easy task either. And then they are going into the next round of connecting specific providers. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, that that's a good way to build relationship. Uh, how long are you gonna do that? The plan. And then they uh, go down to what I love the most, right? Speaking. Get right. you on podcast, and then immediately like, yeah, yeah, we want to speak. I want to get on Joe Rogan show, I'm like. Have you spoken anywhere before? Do you have a, a like a, a set of thousands of dollars on the side that we can just plug you into those shows? If not, you really have to rethink who you need to talk to, right? And right. I think people miss out that. It just, oh, if I just spoke somewhere, that will give me visibility. That's that's not it, right? We need to know who we need to talk to and then that those type of listening yes they are already bought into that host message belief system so leverage that person's credibility but if you don't understand what they truly want and then the direction it's not going to bring anything back 
to your own website, to your own message, it's not going to amplify. So I think that's what even just to start, people misunderstand what it means to be a speaker, where they should be speaking. And then besides that, then there's a whole slew of post-production to create that content engine to really build your authority. In our latest exploration of healthcare tech dynamic landscape, we uncover the critical role of referral marketing, now as merely an option, but a vital strategy for sustainable growth and credibility. We delved into how a culture steady in appreciation and productivity, even just beneficial, is essential. We differentiate between being busy and genuinely productive, effective, emphasize the need of impactful productivity and actions. Moreover, we discuss the importance of strategic relationship, highlighting the role of givers, takers, and matchers in a foresight of true win-win relationship. Throughout, we stress the pivotal mindset every health tech founder must have, taking 100% responsibility for their journey. This Comprehensive approach is not just about navigating the present, it's about shaping the transformative future in healthcare technology. Stay tuned for next week's episode where we unreview the 60 second framework to clearly communicate your value proposition. Thank you for listening. Remember, the positive change we're seeking starts right here with me and you. If you are a fan of the show or if you are just having struggles or success that you're either experienced in the past or are experiencing now in the healthcare industry, these matter to all of us. I want to hear from you. Visit sabrinarombach.com forward slash connect and send me a direct message. Talk soon.